Regardless of whether or not you've played a Thief game in the past, you've probably guessed by now, based on just the name, that the Thief series relies on stealth and cunning to survive. In that regard, the latest installment is no different than any of the other Thief games, and it lives up very well. In fact, if you try to do anything different, a lot of times the game itself won't let you. For instance, here's a great example of what you have to do. So, in this shot, there are some bad guys just outside this room. Rather than taking them on head on at once, which we did in the last shot, and you can see it was a losing endeavor every time, more stealthy approach is needed. So to do this, you open the door, make some noise to attract the attention of the AI. We did this by throwing a bottle against the wall. This approach will get the AI characters to come in one at a time to investigate so you can take them out. Now it's something that, if you're really not used to the style, can certainly take a few times of figuring out what it will take to make the part passable through the use of stealth and a little bit of thinking outside the whole run and gun approach in many other first person games. While this type of strategic gameplay may not be for everyone, the developers at Eidos were able to make it work in Thief by employing the use of interactive environments and visuals. Like in this shot, you can tell just by the dynamic lighting that's casting the shadows on the wall exactly where the bad guys are before you even see the characters themselves. Of course, not all the lighting actually made sense. In this room, notice what happens when you flip the light switch. As you might expect, the light turns on. Except if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice that the light isn't an electric light bulb. It's actually a flickering candle that's operated by a light switch. Unless in this world they have access to those little LED lights that are made to flicker so they look like candle flames. It's just not that realistic. This type of attention to detail can be a great way to engross gamers in the environment because it forces you to pay more attention to the things around you and see how you can use them to progress through the game. Now, that example of turning on a light switch to turn on a candle, it may be a small one, but it's really indicative of the biggest technical issues that we found in the game, and that's just overall inconsistency. For some reason, that inconsistency is actually most noticeable in the prologue of the game versus the rest of the game. For example, in this part, notice this bad guy's reaction to an arrow in the face. Oddly enough, he just shakes it off, and instantly our game is over because we've been found out. In fact, you can't kill anyone at all in the first section of the game. There's really no apparent explanation as to why. Instead, it just gets repetitive and really detracts from the gameplay when you're forced to restore the last save point over and over again if you're not following the linear path that is set for you. Fortunately, once you get past the prologue and start Chapter 1, most of those restrictions go away, and you're free to kill the bad guys and be a little more non-linear instead of being forced to sneak around all the time. But as I mentioned before, some sneaking is to be expected in Thief, and killing bad guys isn't the only inconsistency between the prologue and the rest of the game. Really, it's something that's noticeable from pretty much every technical angle. For instance, here's one of the cutscenes from the first section of the game. Looks pretty consistent with the rest of the gameplay and look, looks to be using the in-game render. If you compare that with this cutscene, it's quite obvious that there are some very different levels there. Now, this cutscene is actually what happens right between the prologue and chapter one. So when we first saw it, it's a pleasant surprise to see this level of quality when up to this point, we were really used to seeing everything just be in-game and we kind of expected that to stay that way throughout the rest of the game. But technically, these two don't even compare. Sorry, we're looking at the technical side. No spoilers on the storyline here. The texturing in Thief has a really great use of flow maps. You can tell this by looking closely at the water here. Notice how it's actually flowing around the geometry. You can see the white caps are going around the geometry instead of flowing through it. While they're really not that tough to set up, flow maps are not something that every game developer takes the time to do. So it was really nice to see Thief take advantage of them here. But again, going back to some of those technical inconsistencies, while the use of flow maps was a great little touch, it made the lack of attention to detail and some other textures stand out that much more, like the transparency on the shader for this bottle or the black hole in the center of this record player. Little details like these can be fixed relatively easily and can really go a long way to keeping you engrossed in the world of Thief. Sometimes, though, it's actually taking a step back that brought some of the inconsistencies to light. So here in this shot, it's raining, so it would make sense to have rain droplets affecting objects. Now, notice how this animated water texture looks close up. It may not be the best implementation of raindrops on a surface, but it's certainly a passable technique for this effect. But if you take a step back and look at the rooftop in between the two dormers here, you'll see how those animated textures can actually detract from the look of rain. It doesn't, all of a sudden, any realism that the droplets had from close up are really lost from afar. 
As you can tell from this particular scene though, the lighting in Thief is really well done. Notice the nice bokeh effect that happens when the rain hits the camera. Really, really nice touch. And what's odd is that this only seems to happen when you look up from an elevated area. So right here, we're actually on a second story ledge. But in this shot, if we look up from the ground, that same effect doesn't happen. It's almost like all of the rain actually just disappears when you look straight up from the ground. Most of the time though, there's really no reason to look up. So as you're playing the game, the rain and weather effects look beautiful. One thing that stood out to us is the user feedback with props in the environment. Notice how we're able to smash these glass objects sitting on this piece of furniture. It's actually the set dressing in Thief is very, very well done. But unfortunately, it's overshadowed by the gameplay that urges you to pick up and use every object to be able to progress the game, to do things like distract the bad guys like we saw in the beginning of the video. Realistically, from a technical perspective, it seems a little silly to expect every single object in a game to be something that you can use. But because you have to use some objects to play the game, you'll find that that really ends up being trying out every single prop in the environment to see what you can do with it. And in most cases, you're going to be disappointed when the objects don't have the expected feedback, like these flower pots here. You'd expect to be able to smash them like you could the bottles earlier. Speaking of interaction with objects, the last thing that I'd like to point out isn't really an inconsistency because it was actually a technical issue that was rather consistent throughout the entire game. And that's really that the HUD seems to show up well before you're able to actually interact with an object. Now if you notice in these shots, uh, you notice that the X HUD for interacting or picking up an object shows up well before we're able to actually interact with it. So you'll find that you actually have to hit the button multiple times. If you're not close enough or actually looking straight at the object, the interaction doesn't occur. So in the end, Thief is a game that's a little rough to get started with. It's certainly not open world. It does have some linear pathways through the storyline. But once you get past the prologue section of the game and some of the other minor inconsistencies and limitations of the game itself, it definitely is one of those games that becomes more and more fun to play the more time you put into it. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to add us on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network using the gamer tag Digital Tutors. We'll see you online.